Hello and welcome to Atop the Fourth Wall, where bad comics burn. I think it's pretty well established by now that I'm a Power Rangers fan. If it isn't, I like Power Rangers! But let's get something straight. Just because I'm a fan of it doesn't mean I can't poke fun at it. Let's face it, the show is cheesy, the concept ridiculous, sometimes casting doesn't see a potential problem that they really should have, the science is ridiculous, and there's just a lot to make fun of. As such, I laugh at plenty of parodies of it, like College Humor's Zordon is Racist sketch, or Animaniacs' sketch making fun of the fight scenes and dialogue and morality plays. Right. The other thing to remember about those? They're actually funny! Unlike today's comic, Mightily Murdered Power Ringers. It's a black and white parody comic, and oh, it's been a while since we got to enjoy a black and white comic on this show, hasn't it? And hell, what's the track record for these things? There was Cinnamon that bizarrely injected Mulder and Scully into the narrative, along with communist rednecks. Then there was sultry teenage Super Foxes, both issues of it that were either incredibly stupid and sexist, or just boring. Xena number one was just violent schlock. And finally, there was Bimbos in Time, a comic that the creator freely admitted was made with the intent to make it the worst comic ever. And kudos to that creator, it's a good contender for that vaunted position. And today, on our 150th episode, let's meet another as we dig into Mightily Murdered Power Ringers number one. shot against a gradient background. I get the feeling that this was supposed to parody a group shot as well, but it's not exactly impressive. The extent of it is that one person is holding another, one guy is standing on top of yet another, and, well, if the red ringer is supposed to be standing on the pink one, it sure as hell isn't made clear. We open on a splash page featuring parodies of the original Six Rangers. Now, for a parody, I don't really mind them calling out stuff like Power of Barney, Power of Godzilla, and etc. I mean, hey, they're related to dinosaurs, giant animals, and all that stuff. But they screw it up! First, there's the Red Ringer. Oh, I'm sorry, Scarlet Ringer. Wait, what the hell is the point of that? It's not a joke, it's just calling it a different shade of red. You might as well have called the Blue Ranger parody the Azure Ringer or something. Anyway, they get it wrong because the Scarlet Ringer calls on the power of Godzilla. I don't know, maybe they were thinking Tyrannosaurus equals Godzilla. Except the Green Ranger is the one with a big dragon that resembles Godzilla! Then there's the Golden Ringer. Again, what's the damn point of making it a different shade of yellow? Instead of an animal, she has the power of positive thinking. I don't recall Trini on the show being any more positive than the rest of the Rangers, who were already a band of non-realistic goody-goods, so why that? I just don't get the joke. Maybe if the rest of them were all wielding powers based on crap like that with powers like healthy eating, that would be a parody, but she's the only one like that. Is it just so they could put the exposed brain on the helmet? That in itself is dumb, but fine, parody, whatever. Oh, and the Green Ringer, who they didn't even get right in that his outfit looks different. That'd be something to parody. Point out how he gets the special Super Duper outfit and is more popular than the rest of them. But no, he just has power of attorney. Again, what is the joke? 
Anyway, the Golden Ringer spots a putty, one of the foot soldiers that the Rangers often dealt with. And this may be a subtle bit of parody, but the Golden Ringer does seem to be drawn without breasts, acknowledging the fact that the show, since it used footage from a Japanese series, changed the gender of one of the Rangers so they could have two women on a team. But for all I know, it could just be the lazy, crappy artwork. I thought I told a putty! That's silly! No, it wasn't a silly putty! And like Silly Putty, this thing is flammable. Don't give me any ideas, comic. I've already gotten complaints from people about the lack of literal burning that occurs on this show. The ringers yawn as more putties attack. Oh, I am so scared. I am absolutely trembling from the thought that they might defeat us, despite the fact that they haven't beat us the last 387 times they've tried. Okay, above all things, I am fair, so yeah, it's good that they're parodying that fights with the putties almost always go their way, but by that same court, they were never afraid of them, it's just that they're enemies and they can still do damage. It has nothing to do with them being afraid of the putties. We cut to Lord Zed, or rather Lord Zzz, or snoring noise, whatever, where he's watching the fight through, uh, a crystal ball? The hell? Oh, and there's even a parody of Goldar named Goldarn, who is a dog with a sphinx hat on his head and the word bad guy written on his chest. They did understand what they were parodying, right? Goldar was a flying monkey, not a dog. And why is bad guy tattooed on his chest? Is it supposed to be parodying the fact that the villains are transparently evil? Well, yeah, the show is for kids. Not every show needs to have deep psychological issues with the villains. Sometimes it's just fun to have cool-looking villains fight our heroes. Those power ringers are beating my putties again. Why aren't they terrified? Maybe because nobody finds putties scary. They're not supposed to be scary. Not to mention you just made this joke on the previous page, only that was done better since having the rangers actually yawn during the attack implied the boring, repetitive nature of some of the fights. This is just spelling it out for idiots. Then again, only idiots would buy this. Or people unfortunate enough to review things on the internet. Lord Zazzle says they'll send down a monster, in this case a giant spider with boxing gloves and... Nike shoes? The hell? Also, I freely admit to being a complete dork here, but I can't help but notice that the giant spider is in three segments when arachnids only have two segments. It also has Big Daddy Bug Thing written on it. Oh, because the monsters in Power Rangers always had stuff written on them! No, they didn't. This is just bizarre. Ew, a spider! Ick! Ew, a spider, ick. Ew, a spider, ick. Observe, an arachnid, ick. Was that supposed to be a joke about Billy always speaking in techno babble on the show? Well, maybe it would be, except for the fact that the parody of the Red Ranger is the one who said it. Then again, maybe that's just another reason why this shouldn't have been in black and white, since the letterer can't tell the difference between shapes. Let's call our Zors. Why don't we ever do that when the putties... Oh, wonderful, a spelling error. Because poor literacy is completely expected in this. Why don't we ever do that when the putties show up? I mean, we know a monster's on the way. Because Zordon set up rules for them on the first episode, one of them being never escalate a fight unless the enemy forces you to. Yeah, it's incredibly stupid, but there is a reason why they don't do it. And hell, from a practical standpoint, the Zords probably consume a lot of energy and fuel, and you shouldn't bring them out when you all have weapons that can take down a normal-sized monster easily. If you're so full of questions, why don't you ask why you turn into a boy when you become a Power Ringer? Oh, so they did know about it, and it's not because of the crappy artwork. However, the artwork is still crappy. And thus their Zords are released. Godzilla, Barney, the skeleton of a dinosaur. Because one of them has the power of Spielberg, which should create an ordinary clothed dinosaur, not a friggin' skeleton. A walking brain, Dino from the Flintstones, and a giant mechanical... Uh, 
Elliot Ness? Now we have to battle the monster until it is ready to defeat us, then form a Super Ultra Combo Zor! Isn't that inefficient? I'm with Brainy over here, to heck with tradition! Let's make the Super Ultra Woozis! One, they actually very rarely used the individual Zords against a monster. Usually they just form the Megazord right away. Two, fighting them with the individual Zords is actually more efficient. You can gang up on him, and it forces him to shoot at more than one target. Then again, according to the opening splash page, these are teenagers with ineptitude. It is actually very rare on this show that a tagline is accurate. So they form it and squash the bug. Those meddlesome Power Ringers have foiled me again! Why must they foil me? And why do I sound like the evil land developer on Scooby-Doo? Yeah, because obviously Scooby-Doo is the only show to ever say that their plans are foiled. And once again, I'm not sure what the heck this is parodying. Because when I think of Lord Zed getting angry that his plan failed, I think of this. I didn't fail, you slippery twit! You failed! You all failed! Just like you failed before! Goldarn points out that they actually know who the Power Ringers are in their civilian lives, and that he never told Lord Zookeeper because he never asked. As such, they will go down and deal with them in their civilian forms. Of course, anything resembling rational in this comic needs to be counterbalanced by something stupid and pointless. Each time the panel changes, the words written on the two change for no reason. What is this, a frickin' political cartoon? Stop putting words on everybody's chests! It doesn't mean anything! The next day, Lord Sleeping Sound and Goldarn are walking around in t-shirts for New Kids on the Block and Deaf Crew. They find the Black Ringer and point out that, say, the Black Ringer is a black guy. At least it isn't as bad as the Asian Yellow Ringer. No! I call Foul Comic! You already established that she's called the Golden Ringer! You can't change it back because you want to make the racism joke now! Oh, and once again, in the interest of fairness and all that, we do have one of the editorial cartoon chest words that actually works, where it says that he's the Black Ringer. I'm guessing this is a reference to the fact that the Rangers wear color-coordinated clothing that might as well advertise to the world that they are the Rangers. Or it could just be that they thought their audience was stupid and couldn't remember who the hell anybody is unless it was pointed out to them. So they grab him and sweet merciful crap! They just ripped him in half! Amazing how he rips apart so easily. That always happens with one-dimensional characters. Ha ha ha! Making a joke over ripping someone in half. Not frickin' funny! And they do it again, too! They find the Red Ringer and give him a wedgie so hard that it pops his torso off of his legs. This isn't funny, it's just friggin' sick! There's the Golden Ringer! Oh, now it's golden again! Can you at least stay consistent with your stupidity? Let me handle this one. You've lost that love and feeling. And she falls apart like a mannequin? That song always makes the girls go to pieces. I, I'm sorry, people. I have no jokes to tell with this. I mean, how do you make a joke out of this? It doesn't have anything to do with Power Rangers. It's not funny. And once again, it's sadistically murdering someone in a nonsensical fashion. Look, I admit, maybe I'm biased here because I am a fan of Power Rangers, but is this really necessary? It just feels completely mean-spirited towards a show that's aimed for friggin' kids. Yeah, even kids' shows should have quality standards to them, but this isn't poking fun at the material in a subtle satire. It's not tongue-in-cheek. It's just stupid and a little gory. The jokes, the few that actually count as jokes, aren't funny, and any time I try to give the thing a little leeway, it throws something dumber at me! Ugh, back to the story. The surviving ringers are summoned to their secret hideaway, conveniently located for skiing, shopping, and sightseeing. The exterior of the command center on Power Rangers is actually a place called the House of the Book, part of a Jewish university, and is often used in Hollywood because the architecture is unique and looks futuristic. It's photoshopped behind Vasquez Rocks, a.k.a. the place where Kirk fought the lizard in Star Trek. You do not ski or shop at Vasquez Rocks! 
Though I suppose you can sightsee there, so I guess they got that part right. Guy in a plastic tube, Zordon. Come on, you couldn't even come up with a parody name for Zordon? Why the hell is Tommy standing like that? Is he getting ready to dance? Numfar, do the dance of joy. Uh... Guy in a plastic tube, why have you called us here? And where are the other three? They're in pieces. What Awful Nine means is that they're in a peace conference. Er, a, a peace conference, I mean. Yeah, that's it. I can't believe that bubblehead said that! Time for backstory! In the middle of the second season of Power Rangers, three of the actors left the show. The in-universe explanation for this was that they had been chosen to attend a peace conference. What I'm getting at here is that apparently three characters just got mutilated in order to make that pun. And it's not even a so bad it's good pun. It's a pun that nobody would ever make ever. Anyway, Zordon says it's not a problem because they have three new teenagers and advises them to stick together to be on the safe side. The group gathers at the juice bar, but then suddenly a giant foot slams down on them. Oh my god, it's Monty Python! They've come to save us with real comedy! Oh no, what's his name? The new guy just got squished! The juice bar is filled with power ringer juice. Human bean juice. He truly was the Scarlet Ringer, through and through. You are covered in your friend's blood! Anyway, it turns out that the giant foot actually is... Wait, Charles Barkley? Th that can't be right! Charles Barkley is our greatest warrior! It's the giant Berserkly from those commercials! Berserkly? What, is he like some sort of nega Charles Barkley? Did he need a magic coin to grow too? Oh, and on an unrelated note, why is this here? Seriously, a reference to the Charles Barkley vs. Godzilla commercials? Why? Because he was giant-sized? It has nothing to do with Power Rangers. We'd better go right to Super Ultra Combo Multizor. See? That wasn't so hard, was it? Making fun of the overly long, ridiculous names of the Megazords. That is a parody! Not another Power Ringer battle. We still haven't got the buildings fixed from last time. No wonder Angel Corners has the highest insurance rates in the world. Oh my god! Another funny joke! I actually really liked that one! Dear god, this comic might actually be turning itself around! And it shoots itself in the foot. The one foot that it has, but I'll get to that in a second. What the hell is this? Mighty Morphin Huggies? Why does the Megazord have a diaper? What is that supposed to parody? Furthermore, it's pretty well established that they are indeed the Power Ringers, as the title suggests, so why does it say Mighty Morphin when it's supposed to say Mightily Murdered? Oh my god, I just now got the title. And since one of them is dead, apparently they can't summon the other Zord to form the other leg, making one wonder how the hell the thing is able to stand at all. Maybe if it was listening to the other side, but look at that! It should be collapsing under its own weight! Oh, and we have a glorious return of stuff written on people's chests. Not a role model! Wow. What a compelling message about Charles Barkley and his status as a role model to the youth of America. Thank you, mightily murdered Power Ringers. You have opened my eyes. May I please shut them again so I don't have to keep reading. Anyway, the Megazord falls over a cliff that wasn't there a second ago because of the aforementioned one-leggedness, and they all die. I am not kidding. I'm assuming that's a massive fountain of blood right there behind the ker death sound effect, since otherwise falling into the water wouldn't kill them. Besides, we all know that the sound effect one makes when splashing into the water is... DOOSH! So, comic's over, right? Of course not! Now it's time for the same damn joke repeated four times! What do I mean? Well, Zordon decides that they need to form a new team. Mighty Methane Power Ranges. No, you're not high right now. This is really happening. Five sentient stoves. Giving the villains a raw deal. Heroes that really cook. 
You're tempting me again with the fire thing, comic. Not wise. Naturally, Lord Razmataz just takes them out with water guns. And Zordon makes another team! Mighty Morphine Powered Addicts! Do you get the joke yet? If you don't, I will explain it, because it isn't funny as it is. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers is a weird name. That is the joke. That is all it is. That it's a weird-ass name for a show. I could ask the question of why Zordon thinks that living stoves or morphine addicts are the best choices he could be making for a team of crime fighters, but then again, this is the guy who originally told Alpha 5... Teleport to us five overbearing and over-emotional humans. No! Not that! Not teenagers! So, maybe the guy has been in the tube too long and isn't quite all there anymore. Don't mess with me! I've got a monkey on my back! That line just made this comic worth it. I don't care if it's a drug reference. That is the best damn battle cry ever! Don't mess with me! I've got a monkey on my back! So Lord Pazuzu defeats them using methadone, which comes out in sparkles, no less, but not before a positively hilarious joke saying that they're going to defeat them with Method 1 before correcting himself for the typo. If that is a reference to something, it is so dated that any semblance of whatever the hell it meant is buried in the bowels of time. Next up in the parade of fail is Naughty Nighty Powder Puffers, featuring four women in lingerie and a guy in lingerie, though he looks as confused as the rest of us. Did I just stumble onto a Power Rangers porno spoof? Uh, it doesn't look like I own any Power Rangers porn. But I did find a clip of a Japanese Power Rangers porn online. <laughs> I've pleasured myself to it five times already. <laughs> hey, Death Note porn. The team is foiled by Lord Zalaraka Nikanaka Firecracker Shishkumba handing them television contracts. Uh, what, were they models? Actresses? Porn stars? You know what, I don't care. Zordon says that he should be less specific and thus he forms a team of completely identical beings with smiley faces that have a blank expression, and calls them something 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 somethings. Or, in other words, the Power Rangers team created by Phalus. Hey! Oh, you know it's true! No, it isn't. I'd call them something 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 whatevers. Though they do look exactly like I designed them. However, they're interrupted by a Ninja Turtle. Yeah, I'm serious. I'm with the law firm of Angelo, Tello, Nardo, and Fael. Mr. Zizizizi -Ziz here has warned us that your name may infringe on certain of our firm's trademarks. If that's the case, where the hell was the Ninja Turtle complaining about sultry teenage super foxes? Honestly, is, is that the joke? That their names are slightly similar and that they both have four words and are both weird names for shows? And so our comic ends with Lord Suck saying he's given up his plans for world conquest and instead will dedicate his life to wiping out whatever force is sent against him. Well then, I guess I won't bother sending anyone against you. Wait, why did Lord Xylophone say that? Oh, they screwed up the word balloon again. Yeah, I can see how difficult it is to place a word balloon when there are only two frickin' people on the page. Not to mention how stupid the ending is anyway! Why does he give a rat's ass about defeating Zordon if he's not gonna take over the world?! Jesus Christ, I've met some dumb bastards in my time, but you outdo them all! This comic sucks, sucks, sucks! It's not funny, the artwork is terrible, it's not a very good parody of Power Rangers, and it just comes across as more than a little mean-spirited! Who the hell wrote this thing anyway? Nigel Nug. Well, whoever that is, I'm damn certain that they could never produce anything of quality. After something this bad, they've got to be the worst! Hi, Linkara. I'm Nat Gertler, also known as Nigel Ng. Nat Gertler? Yes. But 
You don't suck. I know. But you were nominated twice for an Eisner Award. You started 24-Hour Comics Day. You wrote stories for two Power Rangers comics. And I also wrote Mightily Murdered Power Ringers for Parody Press. Although that was so long ago, I really honestly don't even remember what I put into that comic. Uh, at the time, I was trying to write a lot of parody comics really quickly, thinking that that would make me money. I was wrong. I, uh... I don't know how to feel now. Oh, don't worry about it. And feel free to destroy your copy of the comic. Uh, oh, thanks, I will! Oh, now I remember why I haven't read that comic book in over 15 years. I had an ancient Chinese Aztec gypsy mummy put a curse on that book. So, if you've just read that one, maybe you better destroy it before... Yeah, that. Oh, you have gotta be frickin' kidding me! <laughs> oh, come on! Didn't we already do the sentient comic book thing way back in Star Trek number one? Time to die now, comic boy! silly in this. But the thing is that I could have morphed into a friggin' clown and not cared. Because the only thing that matters is that while I'm dressed like this, I'm gonna kick your ass. Thank <laughs> you.